uh, if I'm lucky, uh, flying into L.A. and places, I'll have it on at 20,000, 10,000. The sucker doesn't turn on till 1,000 feet or so. Sure. Then they admit she didn't use air phones. Then the FBI says, yeah, we have no record of her ever making her call getting through to him, to Ted Olson. Uh, what's, uh, give us your take on that, these magical cell phones that on a bunch of flights were working that day. Well, again, Alex, I think this is, uh, these are areas that, 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 you know, we can only ask that, that, that some scientific research be, be presented behind and that, um, you know, for us to, to, to sit here and, and, and try to figure all that out, I mean, it, um, at, at face value, it sounds absurd, but let's investigate it. Let's look at it further. Let's, tr let's turn it over to some experts. Let's see what they have to say. Forget my opinion of it. Forget your opinion of it. I mean, yeah, it's pretty obvious, but still, let's, let's put it in the hands of the people that do that stuff for a living. Guys a thousand times smarter than me. Stuff they do all day, every day. Let's give it to them, along with all these other points, all these other, all these other facts and, 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 you know, omissions as they were and as they are. Charlie, I have Bob, uh, Bob McElvain. I have Bob McElvain on the line with us, and we're going to have him on for about five minutes or so. We're going to go back through some of the final points in the time we have left with you today. But there's a famous quote by Bob McElvain about his son. He says, it upsets me tremendously that Bobby, my son who died, could be used as a political pawn to be manipulated at times like this and abused. And he went on from there. But instead of just reading quotes from Bob who lost his son, uh, Bobby, on 9-11... I want to go ahead and go to him now. Uh, Bob McElvain, who was in the 9-11 Commission, who tried to speak to him. Uh, sir, what do you think on this 8th anniversary about what Charlie and all of us are doing? Well, I, I, if anyone does anything, like I just so greatly appreciate it because, you know, I, it's very difficult to, you know, I could, no one can sit there and coordinate what's happening. And, and as Charlie just said, you know, you, you hear these things, but, you know, they have to be investigated. Well, that's what I spent my life doing because, you know, after going to the 9-11 Commission hearing, I came out so disgusted, absolutely disgusted, that, you know, Ben Venice had even said that this is not an investigation. It's merely an exposition. And, and, and again, I always tell people, please look at that as a parent. And as a parent, my son was murdered. And here, the 9-11 Commission, who were supposed to be investigating the murder of my son. And I try to keep it to myself. I'm not a spokesperson for anyone else in the 9-11 movement, because that's my job as a parent, as a father, to find out how my son was murdered. And I, and I actually thought maybe during the 9-11, maybe they're going to really find out if this is true. So I came out of that and saying, well, nothing they told me is true. So I'll tell people, you know, they say, oh, you're getting involved in these conspiracy theories, and this, and this, and this stuff that it was conspiracy theories. That's all I'm doing. Please tell me what happened. I mean, God, when you hear the FBI says that we can't prove that Osama bin Laden was part of it. Uh, you know, when I pick up the flight manifest, I don't see any Arabs on it. Well, I don't know for sure who's on well, the flight, Bob, but I certainly think, geez, what happened here? You know what well, I mean? Well, Bob McElvain, a former school teacher from Philadelphia, whose son Bobby was killed in the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York on September 11th, uh, is joining us. Bob, uh, what about magic passports at the Pentagon, at Shanksville with Flight 93 and at the World Trade Center less than a day after, with feet of rubble and dust and papers everywhere, the FBI find an unscathed passport of one of the lead hijackers. I mean, come on. How obvious does this have to get? Well, you know, with that, you know, I, I would still say to someone that, all right, they found the passport there. It, 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 it's mind-boggling to me. I mean, immediately I heard that, and I said, this doesn't sound right. But I wouldn't base anything on that. You know, the more I investigate, of course, you know, we don't have the time. You know, I, could, I think I could sit here for six months and we could talk about 9-11. Which, you know, I look we'll at do one, another one, one, show with you, and, and maybe Charlie can come back in a few weeks, when you're on a landline. I know you were down there at the memorial today. You're traveling back uh, in a car right now on cell phone. But, but, but Charlie, would you... I know you and Bob have talked privately. I got you guys together. Would you like to say anything to Bob uh, McElvain? Bob, I just want to say that I'm that I'm, I, I'm I'm just so deeply sorry for your loss. Uh, I'm a I'm a father of five, and I and I I can't even imagine 
what you've been through for almost a decade now, and um, and I hope that my efforts and the efforts of, of people like Alex and all of those that are that are that are joining our cause uh, are are already a part of it. Um, I hope that uh, that we can not only deliver some hope, but we can also deliver some answers. Bob, hey. thanks, Charlie. Appreciate that. It's the least I can do, Bob. It's my duty. Bob, does it anger you? I mean, I know I've talked to you on the phone. It does. To watch Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, uh, Bill O'Reilly saying none of the families think it's an inside job and that they're angry at Charlie. Well, but they never, but they I, never bring these people on the show. They're just there lying, saying this. Is that the media, Alex? Yes. I mean, does that make you mad? Uh, yeah, you know, I try, I, I try not to get it. I mean, I really have to work on my anger. And I really watch the shows. And I, you know, I just, I look at them as entertainers. And to me, it's, it's they're clownish. I mean, like you look at the Glenn Beck. I mean, they're there to make money, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, and they do that to get people angry. And that's why, you know, sometimes you, you really sure. have to protect yourself and, and try to stay away. But from specifically, situations. they are misrepresenting the families. I've interviewed all the heads of the biggest groups, oh, and they all sure. say they have. There's no question about that. But you know, that that they have that kind of power because if people hear it from them, then they'll believe it. And but I mean, so just to be clear on them. record. Just to be clear on record, you and many other family members and victims are not angry at Charlie. And you're, I mean, are you tired of them misrepresenting you and wrapping themselves in the victims? Oh, of course I am. You know, I, I do get angry, but that's why I won't watch the show. <laughs> because it gets me angry. And I, I, you know, you have to stay cool. You have to stay calm. Because I just you can't get the word out if you don't. And, uh, and, you know, I'll tell people that. I'll say I know thousands of people, not, you know, personally, but just from the website, and sometimes it gets me angry that more 9-11 family members are doing more. You know, I've told people, I say, you know, if we got 200 family members who went down there and did civil disobedience down at the Pentagon or down at the FBI building, I'll tell you what, we would get something done. But, you know, it, it's just it's such an emotional thing to get involved in, and that's, that's where the problem is. So don't hear from family members that they feel that this is horrible, what we're doing. But they just don't hear from the other family members because it's so difficult to do this. Sure. They're Bob, in closing, Bob, department. in closing, specifically, what do you, from your research, believe happened on 9-11? I think you had 19 Patsies that came in. They were trained in the United States. Uh, Kaylee Sheikh Bahamut was a Patsy. And Norad, it, it, it was a combination of stand down and because of the war games, it was really easy. You know, people say, well, there had to be thousands of people. But if you understand the war games, the planes should have been intercepted. And what happened in the months before and what happened on that day is just unbelievable. And that's where the story, and it seems a lot of 9-11 troopers, I don't know if they ignore it, but we don't talk about it. Those planes should have been intercepted. That's standard procedure. And real quickly, General Myers said, well, that we know, we, we, we are trained to look at to the outside. But one of the missions of New Iran, and it's, it's been since 1958, when NORAD was uh, uh, started, that air sovereignty is the most thing that they have to look after. So well, that's where an investigation goes, and that's what convinced me 100%. Like, I will right. not go around saying, I think I know. Because all right, Bob, Bob, in closing here, we can have some final comments from Charlie Sheen. Charlie has talked to you. I've talked to you. You want to go on Larry King Live. You're ready to debate whoever they put up against you. And you do, I mean, but in your own words, you would be, you want to go with Charlie and other 9 11 victims and meet with President Obama? Absolutely, Alex. Just tell me, just tell me where and when. But, 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 Bob, you're, you're ready to, you want to go and meet with President Obama? I would, I would meet with anybody. I'll meet with the man on the moon. That's what it took to get the truth out. I'd be willing to meet with anyone. To get the so truth out. Well, yeah, especially the president. <laughs> All right, Bob. Let's, let's start at the top, Bob. Let's start at the top and work our way down. All right, Bob McElvain, God bless you. Sorry about your son's loss, but he lives on through your grandson who you're raising. God bless you, sir, on this eighth anniversary. Take care. All right, hey, thank you, Alex. You thank bet, you, Bob. Bob. All right. There he goes. Okay, in the, in the six, seven minutes we have left with Charlie Sheen. Charlie, your letter... Your statements, your video message of the president, a call to arms. You're the general. Millions are listening. Tens of millions will view this later and listen to it later. 
The call to arms, the call to action. What do you want to see in 9-11 Truth, my friend? I want people to start standing up. I want people, first of all, to wake up, those that haven't already, and then, and then, sorry, I just got interrupted. <laughs> and then, and then just know that they have a voice. And that, and that through, in, in, in mass, in numbers, they have a bigger voice. And, and, and reach out to your local politicians. Get, Organize, get petitions going, make the voice louder, bring this thing to a point where they cannot ignore it, where it isn't just, you know, a whack job actor from Hollywood talking about fantasy theories. Get involved, people. Get out there. Do something. It's one thing to say, and I really appreciate all the comments and all the support, but take that energy and put it into action. Put it into action and demand the truth. Get on the right side of history with us. 